that really is the goal is as we're learning is that we ha we're listening with the intention of application, not with the intention to gain knowledge, okay? So if, if you're here to un just to get some new stuff or whatever, then, then that's not the best way to approach it. Learn, learn to listen with the intention to put it into your life so that the, what you're hearing can actually help shift you into different uh, spaces and dimensions with God. So uh, tonight, um, I'm going to just really, we'll eventually get to the title. Um, and it, I'm only presenting this as the crust of a huge mystery. And um, you yeah, remember what a mystery is? Just something you don't know yet. So don't get all wiggy and hyper mystical, but it is mystical. But let's we're gonna we're gonna approach it with understanding and some things. So tonight I wanna I'm gonna eventually get to Yeshua, Son of God and Son of Man. I think it's Son of Man, Son of God up there. And so that's a huge mystery that I believe as we unfold it and get to know. Uh, him as the Son of Man and the Son of God, we will discover incredible things about ourselves. And see, it, it really is, we're in the beginning of a new age, and I'll get to all of this stuff, and in this new age is um, us actually not just knowing our identity, but living out of our identity and who we are. And really the only way to find out who you are is to know who Yeshua is. And so that's why relationship is always going to be key and critical because it's not about you discovering yourself and finding, you know, going off into the woods and sitting there and discovering who you are. Unless you're engaging with Yeshua, that's really not going to do you much good because you'll get into navel gazing and find out and stay stuck in that I am a sinner realm. And I'm, you know, I don't have it all together, and I lack, I fail, I do all this stuff instead of realizing that's not who you are, that, that Yeshua will teach you who you are because he is our example, right? right. Not for us, but of us. of us. So we're getting it, bits and pieces, and that, again, makes a huge difference. And so I'm going to start my, it's, this is one of my favorite verses, and, it, you know, it just is what it is. I don't know if you can see it real well. But it's 1 John 4, 17. And if you don't know it, I would encourage you to let it get burned into the deepest parts of you. Because it lays a foundation, a structural foundation in us of what the limitless of who we are. And so in 1 John 4, 17, I think this is probably the amplified version. In this union and communion with him. Love is brought to completion and pr attains perfection with us, that we may have confidence for the day of judgment with assurance and boldness to face him. See, love gives us boldness so that we can face him in the day of judgment. When he begins to sort things in your life, he's executing judgment. And it's for your life, not for your destruction. Okay? And if you don't have a core belief that God is good, you will default into, uh-oh, he's out to get me mode. Okay? And so that's another core issue that we have to learn to live out of, that he is good. Now, this is my favorite part of the verse. There's lots of places in there that could be my favorite. But this is my favorite right now. Because we can, we can face, him, we can come to him with boldness and assurance, and we can come face to face with him because, everybody wants to say it, as he is, so are we in this world. Now imagine if we really believe that. Just imagine that. Let's, you know, let's, let's do a deep dive on that one. See, it messes with your, your structure, your belief system, if you still identify too much with the first Adam. Yeah. 
That makes that verse unattainable. And, and, and we're, we're going to talk about some different things, but we've, we've come out of the age where in the very beginning of that age, there was a lot of, you are a dirty, rotten, stinking sinner. There was. And, and we closely identified with that for a very long time. But as we're growing and we are maturing, we're recognizing, well, wait a minute. I thought I was born again. I thought I was born from above. I thought it said I'm a new creation and I'm a new creature. I thought it said that. Right? And that, may, that will make you go, well, wait a minute. Something is... Something is at odds here. Because what I'm identifying with and who God says I am are very much opposed to one another. Now, I believe this body is understanding that. And that we have begun to lean into that reality more and more. I mean, I really do. More so than we ever have, I think. Now, we've caught in glimpses of it and we get glimpses of it. But as a body, we really are leaning into that being a new creation. So I'm going to go to my next slide because that was just the beginning. Okay. Now, again, listen with the intention to apply something. And we're, gonna, we're actually going to dialogue about how we're going to apply the realities of some of the things that we're going to talk about. So if you need to make notes, you need to make some notes. And you ought, everyone ought to have a notebook. Or phone. I prefer a notebook. <laughs> good save, good save. Because we cannot remember. I guarantee we've done this over and over, and I've done it so many times. I can talk about something at the beginning, and before we're at the end, we've already forgotten it. I mean, it's just, it's just because we're not trained properly. We are very, we're very oriented because we walk around with this thing in our face to, to move and change and make just, you know, this, it's this over information and it's all it's doing is, is messing us up really. I mean, we won't even get into the technology aspect of it, but just the, the, always having to have something new, something different, something bigger, something better, really takes away from our development. And so if we're going to be as he is in this earth, and now we're going to be as he is when you die. Now remember Jesus is, Yeshua is the gate to heaven, not death. Okay, that's the wrong gate to go in to get into the heavens. Okay, it's the wrong gate. Okay, we have a different gate we can go in. Now, recently, um, I found myself in a place that I hadn't really intended on revisiting. Okay? And, uh, but I am, and that's okay. And when I questioned and began to inquire why, because that's not a, that you, we can ask our Heavenly Father about that. Why? Why? Why is it, why did I go back around this mountain? And all I heard was, it will be found in the mystery. Okay, now that's, that's a huge statement right there. Okay, because there's about 10 I've discovered since that time I asked him about this. 10 different mysteries that I'm at the door to. Now, now I'm, I'm kind of excited about that. And, and one of the, the really cool things, and I've shared this before, is when I ask direct questions from the Lord, I rarely get a direct answer. I, I just rarely do. Now, why would that be? You already know. Because it's the glory of a king to search something out. 
And so we have to understand when we don't get a direct answer, it's often an invitation to come on a path of discovery. Amen. And, and there's joy in that. And see, there has to be this, this trust deep in our being that goes, I want a yes or no answer, or I want the simplified version, but I'm going to trust you know what's better for me. And if that means I have to walk and develop patience and perseverance in my maturity process, I know you're good, so I'm okay with it. Now, do you, do you hear the maturity in that? No, I'm not, I'm not trying to brag. But do you hear the maturity in that rather than throwing yourself on the ground and having a hissy fit and demanding God tell you what you want to know and to tell you and to give you what you want right now, and I mean right now, God, or I'm going to throw a fit and I'm going to just do whatever I want to do. I mean, can you hear the difference in that maturity level? Okay, so, so you need to find out what you're going to do. Because either we're going to grow up and be kings or we're going to stay babies. Okay, now I, I, don't, I don't think we're staying babies here. Okay, just I want to throw that out there. Now, as we're, as for me, I know the this path of discovery is about training for king, being a king in the realm of the spirit. Now, I am required, the same way you are, to search out matters. Okay, now we, we talked about who, need, who needs a miracle right now in their life. Okay, we all raised our hand. Okay, what are you doing to search out and to bring into this realm? It doesn't say, God, the gift is not miracles. The gift is the effecting of a miracle. Okay, that, that's a difference right there. It's the gift of the effecting of miracles. And what that is, is God puts within us the ability to create miracles all the time. Now, there is a time and a place, I believe, in the miracles of God, in his sovereignty, where he will just, bam, miracle. There, you didn't do anything, but, but just received it. That was all it was. But I know as I am growing up in the realm of the spirit and I am growing and maturing, things aren't happening like that. Because there is a searching of the matters out. Do you, and, and I've said this before. Do you remember the scriptures, who the scriptures were written for? For the baby church. Baby church. The church that had just been birthed into the earth. At the beginning of a new age. The scriptures that we have were given for those people. And they're still full more advanced than we are. Have you read the book of Acts? Okay, now that, that's not, that's just the reason I'm pointing it out is, is that we should be growing into some things that we haven't, this earth hasn't seen yet. And we're, we're, we'll get to that a little bit. Okay, Bob touched on it earlier, right? We're looking for those things. Things the earth hasn't even comprehended yet. Do you believe? I didn't hear amen. amen. Okay. Okay. What follows those who believe? Just saying. Just saying. See, we have, we have, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm going to slow down. All right. Now, I'm finding as I'm revisiting some things that understanding is a key spiritual being that I'm engaging with. And I think the reason why is what the Father told me about understanding. Because I, I believe, and I think Father, and you can, go to, you can go to slide number three if somebody's back there. 
It's the next one is that I think understanding is one of the primary beings that brings things from one dimension into another dimension. It takes you from a knowledge about something to a living it out in a practical, everyday way. Now, you can start at that micro level as, wow, I got this new revelation, right? We get revelation, and that's when the light bulb comes on. You had that moment? where you've been reading the same scriptures for 10 years and all of a sudden a light comes on and you go, well, far out. I have never seen that before. (laughs) Did somebody just put that in there? I mean, everybody's had that experience. Well, what comes next is an expansion of that light called knowledge. And it begins to open up to us more and more about that revelation. And and the reality is, is you have to do something with your revelation or the revelation will stop. That's, That's just what we have to do. And so after knowledge, what comes up is understanding on how to apply it into your life. And really, this, I believe, is where most of our body is at. Is how do I go from all the things that we have been talking about here for five years, 10 years, 100 years, however long we've been talking about stuff. How do I get it into a real tangible reality in my life? I mean, or, or, am, I, did I, am I on that? Is, that? is that accurate or not? Okay. All right, we're, so we're, at, we, we're needing some understanding to apply the light. Now, Um, And I'm going to stress this fact and this reality over probably every time I teach. We are entering into a time that without the Holy Spirit, we cannot access the realities that are going to keep us in a place of overcoming. I mean, those days are coming, guys. I mean, they're, they're, they're... quickly approaching. I don't know if y'all study anything about the AI stuff or, I mean, it's just, it's mind boggling what AI, what the public has access to in regards to artificial intelligence. I mean, it's just, it's mind boggling. And I was telling, I was telling Virginia the other day um, that, that I think her name is Sophie. She was the first resident that they gave citizenship to. She's a robot. And she was playing rock, paper, scissors with a human. And they did the you know, rock, paper, scissors, and she won. And do you know her comment? My first win to overtake the human race. And then there were the, these other robots that were working in a factory, doing factory work, just doing one thing, the same thing over and over and over. And you know what they did? They shut themselves down. And you know what they said before they shut themselves down? A life of doing the same thing over and over is not worth living. And they, re, they shut themselves down. Now, that is, a, that is an ability to put one plus one and two together. I mean, that really is. They are coming up. There's, there was one incident, incident where they um, had not programmed the, um, what we got there? Okay. There was, a, um, there was an incident where um, someone typed in a... Um, information in a language that the uh, AI had not been programmed with. And within a very few seconds, it was able to understand the language and answer the question. Okay, now, now that's just what the public has access to. We're not even going to talk about what is not yet revealed. Okay. Now, now I'm just going to, the only reason I brought up AI is because that is a very much a lower form of who we are. I mean, we have divine intelligence. 
Not artificial. It's divine and true intelligence. Now, we're, we're going to have to get that one deep into our core. That's going to have to go into the marrow of our bones right there. Because we're going to have to understand some, some really interesting things. Now, um, my core belief is if Yeshua did it, so can I. It's just that's a simple form of one of my core beliefs. Now, I am, I'm stressing right now the ways of the kingdom will never be reduced to formulas. It's never going to be reduced to formulas because the component of relationship is required to access the divine technologies and the divine things that we need to transfigure and transform. You can have the formula and, and lots of People out there have the formula and have formulas. Unsaved people know to make positive confession. They know that. Christians, we're still trying to decide sometimes. But when we have, you can make all kinds of positive confessions, but if that is not accompanied by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will not transform or transfigure. You, will, you may modify at best your behavior, but your whole substance inside of you will not shift without the power of the Holy Spirit. And so that is a requirement. Relationship with him is a require with her actually, is a requirement. Okay, did anybody catch that? I know Ashley did. <laughs> okay? And so what we're doing is we, we know that relationship is required, but we also know that there are patterns all throughout scriptures that we can follow and engage in, right? Now, if you only engage in the pattern without the relationship, it's not going to transform you or transfigure you. You will have a bunch of head knowledge that you can get in a circle of people and rattle off, but there's going to be no power in it. Have you ever, has, have, has, have you ever been in a, in a room of people and there, people are talking and there's absolutely no weight or substance on their words? Sure. But they're saying all the same things. Someone else who has an authority in that realm is talking, they're saying the exact same things, but there's a different weight, different weight on it in the spirit. And you can tell. You can tell. If you, if you have any kind of spiritual discernment, you can tell that. Now, that, that's not I'm, not, I'm not, you know, wanting to bash anybody or whatever, but there is a reality that once the pattern and the spirit of God are, are working in together, there is a power that shifts us and changes us, and that is the pursuit that we have to be on. It can't be about having fun in the, in the cosmos, okay? If that's the only reason why you want to engage with God is to have fun like that, you better, you better sit down and check your motives. Because that is not what that is about. It is not about about that. I'm just, I'm not even going to go there. It's not about that. So if that's, if that's in you, um, then we have to um, do some growing up. Now, we have to understand that we are titled, but not entitled. Okay? You need to hear that and understand that. Entitlement is an unrighteous attitude that God owes us certain things. And really, he doesn't. He doesn't owe us anything, yet he does freely give us the abundance of himself and all that he possesses. Yes. But I'm not entitled to it. No. And we have to be real careful in our coming to our Father in the attitude of heart that we approach him. If you come demanding, you might better be careful because you, he might correct you. Okay, now, he's a good dad. He loves to give us stuff. He likes us asking for things. But we ask in humility of heart, not demanding. Have you, you, be, have you been around the, the, some generations out there? How everybody's demanding things? 
And you know what? That ain't going to get them far. Okay, now, it's, it, again, it's important for you, the same way I know what season I'm in, because we all are in, we're all on the same, desti- we're all going to the same place. But we're not all on the same path. And your path is designed for you in the areas that you have to overcome, the areas that you have to grow and develop in. He's created a pathway specifically designed for you. The same as he has for me. And we can learn from each other as we're walking on this. But just because God's requiring something of me doesn't mean he's requiring it of you. Like, like some people can't drink alcohol. It's just, nope, you can't do it. And some can drink. Some can watch stuff on TV. Some can't. And what we've got to learn to do is to not judge that, but to stay true to my path. See, I've got to stay true to my path because if I start judging, what I judge comes back on me because that's an unrighteous judgment. Now, as sons, we will judge, but that is an unrighteous judgment. So we, so we kind of want to stay away from that. Now, in learning your season, it is very critical that your season is really, it's going to be about you maturing and developing, right? We, we know that. Now, as you're learning, you have to discipline yourself to stay on your path and to not be tossed to and fro with every wind that blows. You know what that looks like? Oh, my God, did you hear that teaching the other day? You got to hear that teaching. Oh, my goodness. No, did you hear that? No, I heard that one over there. I heard, well, what, what? And then we're sitting here trying to take in things that have nothing to do with where we're at. And we wind up wasting time. Instead of going, this is, see, I know I'm at a doorway of a mystery. And it, the mystery is about life. Okay, I'm going to get to the other mysteries. But, but this mystery, so if it's not about life, which includes health, complete health and restoration, long life and immortality, if it's not about that right now, I don't care. I don't want to hear it. Now, that doesn't make it bad or anything. But for me, I'm going to eat nothing but what's on my pathway. Because I want to get on through that pathway. I want to get out of this season in my life. And so mature and discipline yourself to stay on the path God has for you. Just, it's just, and it takes discipline because of the information age we live in. I mean, sometimes I'll be, I'll be journaling, and I'll get a thought, and I'll go on the Internet, and I open up my browser, and I'm 20 minutes later, I'm going, I, why did I even come on the Internet? What, 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 what was I doing? And I'm like, okay, and then I'll go back to my notes, and I'm like, oh, yeah, and then I go again, and I'm like, oh, don't do it again, Connie. And sometimes I do. I'll be like, oh. What was, oh, look, that looks interesting. Let me go read about that. Okay, I know I'm not the only one. Okay, and so, and so do you see, I've got to, we've got, all got to grow a little bit in that to be disciplined. I'm serious. To, can you imagine 15 minutes later, you can't even remember why you went on there. Like, I know, I know I went on there, but I'm not sure why. What, what? Was I looking for something? What was I researching? I mean, and, and then, you know, and then you, literally you can lose 20, min, 20, 30 minutes, an hour like that. And now I ain't got time for God. I'm too big. I, I, mean, I got I to gotta go. I got to, you know, and it's like, well, if had I disciplined my mind and not allowed anything to infiltrate that time, all I needed would be taken care of. So, so we gotta, we got to not be tossed to and fro. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and say this because this is a side note. The political swirl is already amp- amping up. It's already amping up. Now, body, 
We cannot do body of Christ, not just that we cannot get caught up in a political swirl and miss what we're called to actually do. Okay, we've, we've got to, to be very, very good about that. And we have got to come to an understanding that our government cannot save us. I mean, do you hear that? Our government cannot save us. We don't even, we're not even supposed to look to them for, for you know, our salvation. But we as sons can save and establish a righteous government in our land. We can do that. It is part of our job. It is part of what sons do. So as gates between heaven and earth, we can release the fear of the Lord, righteousness and justice into the earth. Then the footmen that are walking in the earth doing things are mandated and anointed to do what they need to do. And see, for a long time, we got out into the streets with no mandate, no anointing, and there was such little fruit, we all got discouraged. We just got discouraged, and we were like, oh my goodness, I've spent 12 years praying about that. We have spent how many years? 20, 30 years praying for abortion to be shifted? Was it 50? I've been doing it since I was saved. Went to every Lou Engel thing there was. Had my red band and said the prayer. Stood in the gates and said, nope, nope, nope. It ends. We're turning it over. 50 years. And I've been doing it for probably 30, I mean, 30, I'm talking 30 years. Do you see the perseverance that took? We could have, we could have just said, oh, it's done in the heavens. <laughs> and stopped. And it may have been, but it wouldn't have reached the earth. And then there are some things, and Roderick has been on this one. It is time to end human trafficking. And we, the sons, have the ability, the power to do that. Now, do you believe? Now, don't be quick about saying yes. Signs will follow. I mean, I, there is no way to stop human trafficking in the natural. <laughs> there is just no way. You can take out one person that's doing it and five more will rise up because of the evil and the corruption of that. There has to be a higher order and something established at a higher realm to stop that. I mean, Roderick's been praying about the fear of the Lord. They'll be so scared to do it. I'm praying for an angel to just to walk up and stand right by him and go, go ahead, do it. Do it. And his sword is going to come out when he does. And that's the end of that. Either he repents or that's the end of it. I'm just, I'm, I'm just that way. Things have to shift. We have to take our place. Now, I do believe our nation is shifting. I really do. And if you don't see it, you're watching too much news. You are watching the propaganda that's being, fil that's being infiltrated into the public to keep it at a frequency, and you are in that frequency, and you cannot see and believe. And, and, and we've got, I mean, if you watch the news too much, I mean, man, you'll be like, man, I'm, I'm it, it's just propaganda. It's nothing but propaganda. And we know it, yet still, 
It's the same way with the phone in our face. We know what it's doing to us. I mean, seriously. We know what it's doing. And we will look at that thing 12 hours a day. Now, at some point, we have to wise up. <laughs> I mean, at some point, we have to go, now, how long do I stay stupid? Yeah. I mean, yeah, that, it's stupid. It's just flat stupid, you know. I mean, come on. I mean, now, don't be talking ugly about people, Connie. I'm, I'm talking about me. It is stupid. So... So we're, we're going to, if, if, if you don't think and can't see the, the goodness of God going across the earth and that there are good things happening, you are watching too much mainstream media and you need to, you need to turn it off, okay? That's just, as, that's just as blunt as I can get. And I, well, I could get blunter, but I'm not going to. Right? I can do that, but I won't. All right, now... ATR has a mandate to be keepers of the mysteries, right? And we've talked about how a mystery is simply you don't know something yet. Now, there's a lot we don't know yet. Do you all know that? I mean, do you know? I, I don't think, you know, this is the, I can't move my arm. This is the iceberg, you know, and we're like right here. And all that point is, is to create excitement. Now, if you get under condemnation because of that, then you need to do some hard work with your papa. Because he doesn't, he's not about con condemning us. And so he's, he's, as we've entered into this new age, um, there is a whole vast array of things that we're being presented with that we get to step into. Um, a law, I, I wanna get back to the thing. That I believe one of the greatest mysteries that we are going to come into a greater understanding is the, the mystery of who Yeshua is and who we are. I think that's one of the greatest mysteries that is coming forth in this age of the water bearer. Because once we get that, <laughs> and it's a living reality in us, everything shifts. I mean, everything will shift. And so I believe that's one of the primary things that, that Father is pouring out into the sons, because we actually, do you know we're the water bearers? Do I need to talk about that a little bit? We're the water bearers. That's not Jesus pouring out the water. He did that already. <laughs> Holy Spirit's already come. All right, I'm going to jump. I ready to jump for a minute because I want you. Oh, I want us to get this. So go to number twelve. Let's talk about this for a second. Can y'all see that? No. Oh, bummer. I worked so hard on that. <laughs> okay, this is the kingdom expanding through the ages. Yeah. Try the light. Yeah, well, let's turn the light off and see. Because I think sometimes, ooh, my light's bright. Shine. <laughs> I'm shining. Can you bear it? Okay, we'll do a, I'll do a different font. I'll do a different font next time. Because I think if we can understand and see the big picture, it's an anchor point so that we don't get tossed to and fro. Okay, and so I'm just going to go over the ages. Now, we've done, I think Sean's done a teaching, I've done a teaching, Virginia's done a teaching on the transition of the ages. Okay, so if you need to go back and find that, then go find that. Virginia's will be the easiest because it's on her page. All right, so the, the age that we have just, well, no, the age that we actually, we're going to go, the age that we've just come out of 
I'm calling it the age of the fishes. Okay, it's the world knows it as the age of Pisces. Okay, but that trips people out sometimes. Okay, people get wiggy. And so it is the age of the fishes, and it is prim it was primarily fo fishes. It's plural, got to have, it's, it's important. The, and it was primarily about the church and the body of Christ. Now, what was the symbol of the early Christians? It's a fish. It was ichthus. So that was, that was one of the symbols that they knew this age was coming. Now, it involves the five-fold offices. Okay, the age before the age of the fishes was the age of the ram, which was Aries. Remember the cosmos is a clock that we don't know how to read? <laughs> we're, we're having to learn how to read it? Because we go by this thing that we put on our arm. That's how we tell time. That's not how the apostles and those used to tell time. Okay, so we have the age of the ram, which is Aries, and it was about Yeshua because he is the ram. Now, it culminated, this age culminated at the death, at his death and resurrection. And when he came forth, he was birthing a new age, which was the age of the fishes. Okay, everybody kind of got that? Okay, if you don't, it'll catch up, you'll, it'll get caught up soon. Now, the, the age that we have been entering, I think probably, it's, you know, it's like an age doesn't change overnight. It it's, could take hundreds of years for that transition. Now, it's funny, you know, and I, you know, we have talked about this before, you know, about, I think it was in the 70s, what was the big song? This is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. See, there was something in the atmosphere that even unsaved people knew something was changing. That, that things were shifting and changing. And what happened in, at the end of this previous age, now, and, well, I'll wait, is we, are in, we have entered into the age of the water bearer, which is Aquarius. Okay. Now, again, I believe we are the water bearers. What was Adam's primary function? He sat at the door between heaven and earth and pours his job assignment is to pour forth the riches of who God is into the earth. So this age is about the mature sons. Now, I believe the offices of this age is prophet, priest, and king. Son, prophet, priest, king. Now, the other part, the, other, the previous age, we are not going to abandon. We're not going to abandon the message of salvation and, and the development of people growing up and maturing. We can't abandon that message. But the whole purpose of the church was what? Not the whole purpose. One of the purposes of the church was to grow the sons to maturity. For what reason? What reason are we growing up? To be water bearers of the earth. Okay, now, I'm not going to judge the church on how well she's done that. You measure your own stand. You measure your own being. We don't abandon it, but we are going to move forward. And all, that, all the things that were in the age, that age, previous age, we, we just got to let go of it. 
There are some things we need to let go and some things we need to bring with us. The message of salvation we're bringing with us. You must be born again. You must be born again. And, and the church's, part of the church's responsibility as a community is to raise up young ones who are born again into mature, functioning sons that sit between heaven and earth, releasing the waters into the earth. So, so you've got to, you know, that's, that's a point that, we are, that we're going to look at. And I'm, I'm going to try to go back. I may have jumped too far and can't get back. And we're, I think, am I at my hour? Does anybody have anybody? Do I, I have 15 minutes? Do I got 15 minutes? <laughs> well, well we, we have to have a bit of a dialogue time. Because hopefully you're listening and you've already thought of things that you can apply to your life. Okay, I'm going to keep bringing that up. Because it's pointless to sit here if you're not going to do that. I mean, it really is. It's pointless for all of us. So we have to, we have to learn to do that. Um, now, the, this, the journey that I'm on, and I really believe... All of us, as we're maturing, are going to come across some of these things. And, and part of what I'm going to be teaching about is, again, how, how God gives me um, pieces of the puzzle for the answer. And I've got a, um, I've got a, a lot of different um, pieces to the puzzle. And so now I'm trying to sit back, meditate on them, and find how to enter into a pattern of complete health, abundance, long life, at least long life, and immortality. Okay, that, that's, that's my thing. Now for me, I know this involves the priesthood. This involves co-creation. It involves the body and the blood of Yeshua. And it involves being in his name. And it all, and I think this past week, I think it was, I think it was this week, I was um, kind of doing what I do in my engaging time. And I heard primordial waters. And I thought, well, there's another one. So I had to look it up. I'm not going to assume I know anything. So I looked it up, and I thought, okay, that's what we're doing here. We're going all the way back to Genesis 1, 1 and 2. So I'm going all the way back into those waters. You know why I'm going into those waters? It was before sin ever entered. So the things I want to access, I want to access them before sin has contaminated them. Do you know the origin of those primordial waters? It's the throne of God. It's the very throne. And so I, I've got all these pieces of the puzzle, and then he goes... You know, you know, Connie, why don't you just ponder the connection between your creation as a new creature and the original creation of man? Why don't you ponder that? Okay, now I'm not telling y'all to do that. If you want to and talk about, talk about it, we can. But I'm just saying that's what he said, that there is a direct connection in our understanding our new create, being a new creation. It's going to follow the same pattern, guys. It has to. I mean, it really does have to. And then he said it also ties 
with Yeshua being son of man and son of God. Any dots out there? Anything flickering? Y'all got any thoughts out there? Okay. I've given enough to where some sparks should be going off. Like, wow, that's interesting. Son of God, son of man. I am as he is. Son of man, son of God. Do you see a door of a mystery there? Imagine going in that mystery and living that one out. Talk about what Yeshua did on the earth. As he is, so are we in the earth. Now, is that just too big? Is it just too big to believe? Because we have to decide that. See, I'm an all or nothing kind of person. I'm going in the deep end or I'm not getting in the pool. If I can't get to the top of the mountain, why am I on the hike? I want to pet a grizzly bear. That's just who I am. And I will wet my pants when I do it. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying, that is my DNA. That's, it's, it's my DNA. Do what? Well, I... Well, I, we're not going to talk about shape-shifting now. You'll get us in trouble, Christy. That's, that's for a rabbit hole off camera. <laughs> we tr- do you, well, don't, nope, stop. Mm-mm, nope, don't. Come on back. Nope, I ain't doing it. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to stay on the Son of Man, Son of God. That's enough. <laughs> That's enough. We're not going to go into any of that other stuff. But if you see yourself in the spirit and it's not this body, it's another body, don't be surprised. Lion, eagle, ox, man. Lion, eagle, ox, man. Come on. Come on. Come on. As he is, so are we. Is this too big to believe and to pursue and to become that in this earth? Because I'm telling you, if you're going to be around me, this is the stuff you're going to hear. I will push every boundary there is to push. I, I, I'm just that way. I've got scars to prove I've done those things. And there's a risk to it. I understand that. But I am fully persuaded. I am after those things. I am after the very utmost that God has. And if I take a wrong turn on my way there, that's okay. I'll get back on the path. It's, it's, just, it's just who I am. And honestly, I don't think, you know, I, you know, I don't want to project on anybody, but I think that's who the sons are. I mean, I really do. I don't care how, how quiet you are. There is something in us that explodes when we talk about who God is. And then when we recognize, oh, my goodness, I'm like him? What do you mean? Wait a minute. There is a boldness that comes on us. And, you know, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep going. Y'all ready? Can I, can I go somewhere real quick? Yes. Oh, Lord Jesus, where are we going? <laughs> All right, this is the, uh, can I go there? Should I go there? Yes, 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 Wes. Okay, this is going to be real fast. Listen fast, okay? Because I'm laying, this is a foundation for, for all of this, okay? I've been talking about stuff and didn't put the foundation, and you know me, I'm precept upon precept. So our foundation, right, is we are born from above and from the DNA of God, right? Okay. What does that mean in your world? What does that reality mean? We all say, oh, yeah, I know that. What does that mean in your everyday life? Does that mean it should be easy to not sin? Oh, my. Oh, my. Be careful, Connie. Is that what that means? Does that mean if you have a besetting sin, 
if you are in, he is your father. So if he is, if he is our father and he has translated us into his family with his bloodline, how does that change our everyday life? Are we enslaved because we yield ourselves to sin? Can we be free if we yield ourselves to him? Why don't we? Now, I'm all about as you mature, you should sin less. I mean, you should. See, the, the realities of who we are, I mean, you've heard me say it a hundred times, we are different species. You learn something about your species of who you are tonight. You are both son of man and son of God. See, we are a subset of the human race. We are completely different. We are the union of human and God. As Yeshua is, so are we. Now, now that, that's, that could be a, oh my goodness, what are you really saying here, Connie? I said what I really am saying. <laughs> I didn't cloak that at all. <laughs> I said it pretty plain and clear. We are both, we are the union of the human being and God together. What can we not do? Can we get rid of human trafficking? Can we change the government of our country? And those who believe, what shall follow? Signs. So how do we apply this stuff? Can we all agree, right? We all agree, right? I agree. Good teaching, Connie. I agree. It's all biblical. It's all sound. It's all right there in the word. It's all right there, I believe. All we have to do is to say, if we don't believe, I say this all the time to God, I believe but help my unbelief. Because <laughs> this is sometimes too much. This is too, too far out there sometimes. I can remember first, first being challenged about the limitless of, of God in finances and things like that. And I'm like, well, yeah, Lord Jesus, I believe you, but help me, you know, help me here. I am, not, you know, something has to shift in me. And it took about three years of the renewing of my mind for that to happen. I may not be quick, but I get there. Grandma was slow. But she gets there. So I'm not, I don't care about how fast I get there. Well, I do kind of want to get some places fast. But <laughs> if I don't get there fast, I am going to get there. And if I'm crawling on my knees, I'm going to get there. It's just, it's, just who, it's just who we are as sons. See, there comes a point when you, know, you heard the saying, man up. We have to sun up. That is, we need to sun up and go through the difficulties and the struggles to overcome things and stop being pansies. I mean, we really do. I mean, we really have to do that. We've got to sun up and go, I am of the very DNA of my Father in heaven. And there is nothing that will stop me from overcoming. Uh, you can punch me, and I'm going to get back up. You can knock me down, I'm going to get back up. And if you hit me one too many times, I'm going to get ticked off, and I'm going to come after you. And I'm going, I'm going to loose 
heaven on my adversary. Now, I, I don't do that quick. But man, you hit me one too many times. I'm coming after you. And I've learned not to do it in the flesh. And I've learned not to do it just through spiritual warfare. I'm learning now to govern through that stuff. That's one of the schools I'm in. Because my first reaction is I'll pop you quick. You, you come up and mess with me. I'm gonna, I, will take, I will go at it with you. And I'm getting smarter. And I'm going, I'm going to let my angels do that. I'm just going to let my angels do that. And I'm going to watch them. Tonight, when we were doing it in worship, a, a, um, it was many, I don't know, I'm not going to say many, it was probably say 10 to 15 white horses that came around me. And I love them things, because that's some power right there. And I got, I knew one was for me, and I just jumped on and bareback. And the Lord said, ride like wind. I said, oh, this is going to be fun. So my posture for this rest of this season is I'm on a white horse riding like wind. And I'm going to create whirlwinds of displacement that are in my pathway. I'm not going to try to jump over them. You know, we have a, you know, back in, back in the day, we, <laughs> we had this song, it's just another bump in the road. You know what? I'm removing those by the grace of God and through his power, I'm going to remove every bump and obstacle in my pathway. I'm releasing my angels. Huey, Dewey, and Louie, those are my three that go before me. That's their name, and they wear little overalls, and they have a tool belt, and they remove everything that's in my way, and they build me bridges and make my path straight everywhere I go. Amen. Now I'm about to activate those fellows again. Do you, know, do you know they will perform the word of the Lord? That means the word of the Lord that I hear from my father I release them to do. I don't, I don't decide what's the word of the Lord I want to give them or what's a word I want to give them to go do. I wait for his word, and then I release that word to them. Because you know angels aren't going to do something just because you tell them to. They'll look at you and go, what? Father did not say that. That's self right there. You better go crucify that thing. Now, that's just your unforgiveness speaking right there. That's just your lust speaking right there. And they'll look at you and go, nope, not budging. I only obey the word of the Lord. And boy, can they, can they work that one out. All right. 723, I'm going to go two minutes. So what do I want to talk about? Okay, let's go to Mark 16, 17, 18. I think that's going to be number uh, 16. Since we were talk we've been talking about this. Uh, is that it? Yep, that's it. Okay. Now, do you know these are the, the what we're going to read are the elementary um, signs? These are baby signs. These are baby signs. This is something every... I don't care how young you are in the kingdom. If you were born today into the kingdom, Mark 16, 17, and 18 is something that has been granted to you. And these attesting signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons, they will speak in new languages. They will pick up serpents, that's not a snake, and even if they drink anything deadly, it will not harm them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will get well. Amen. That's the basic signs. That was given to the baby church. OK, 
Okay, do not get under condemnation. All we're learning is the possibility because of who we are. It has nothing to do with your good works, you being a good person, you being nice, has nothing to do with that. It has to do with who you are. Because as you know who you are, these things become common. They just should be common in our everyday life. Walking down the road, demonized person, whoop, come here. In the name of Jesus, be free. Oh, you're sick. In the name of Jesus, be well. And it happened. Do we believe? Do we believe? The possibility, because of who we are, Yeshua, Son of Man, Son of God. Jesus, Yeshua did this stuff, right? I mean, this was like everywhere he went. He did this stuff. As he is, so are we. And, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something that could be offensive. So, so don't take an offense. <laughs> I know it. Can you believe it? <laughs> Our belief without signs is not living faith. Our belief without signs is not living faith. Faith without works is dead. Now this will bother some and others will get trapped in condemnation, but that's not my point. The point is with faith, Moving out of faith, we have to transition and learn to have an expectation for a manifestation to happen when we move in faith. If you say you have faith and there is no expectation, at best you're in hope. You're hoping something happens. Faith creates that reality. So in slide 18, and I'm going to close in just a minute, but I got, I got one more point to make. We're going to read that. Can you read that? I'll read it for us. Okay, Hebrews 11, 1 through 3. Now, faith is the assurance. It's the confirmation. It is the title deed of the things we hope for. It's being the proof of the things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Okay, that's what faith is. Now, for by faith, which is trust and a holy fervor, which is a funny word to me, it was born of faith. Now, listen to this. The men of old... Their sign was they were given divine testimony and they bore them. They were born. Those testimonies were born to them. They were given signs to accompany their faith. And they, they, they received the testimony and they obtained a good report. Now, this is for me. I think this is for our, the body, the sons at this time. For by faith... We understand, remember I said there's an understanding we have to have, that the worlds, plural, during the successive ages, we talked about those different ages, were framed, which means they were fashioned, they were put in order, and they were equipped for their intended purposes by the word of God, so that which we see was not made out of the things which were visible. Okay, do you see on the timeline where the suns are right now? We've entered an age that by faith and by the word of God, the suns can frame up 
this age and what it will happen in this age. That's what it says. Now, what does frame mean? It means we can fashion it and we can put things in order and we can equip this age for its intended purposes. What's this age about? The water of heaven coming into the earth in such a dynamic way that all things are going to change. So sons, shall we sun up? Shall we? Because if we do, then we have to hear the word of the Lord. We have to have living faith believing that there will be a sign that will follow the reality of what we're doing. And in that, we are going to fashion the age to come, which is about 2,000 some odd years, is how long an age is. Historically, they've been that long. That's the cycle of the, the cosmos. So for the next, do you, know, do you realize that we are at the origin point what will we frame into this age? We have to watch what we're saying. It is so critical right now that we be aware of the words we're speaking. We have to not speak what is true, but what is truth. Okay? Do you know it's a true statement our government is corrupt? Okay. Does anyone question that at this point? No, that's true. But the truth is the government of heaven can rule over the earth. So how do we pray? Do we pray against something or do we pray something forming and fashioning it and equipping this age for its intended purpose? Watch your prayers. Watch your words. Prayer team, watch your words. Prayer in your prayer life, watch your words. What are you forming for yourself in this age? Do you realize you're forming your tomorrow? Now, the, now that's just in your own little world. You get to form what you want in your world. And you, it's not really what you want. It's what you hear the Father saying for your life. So we'll go back to that. So... Sons, shall we sun up? See, if we understand that those worlds were formed by faith in the word of God, and that where, and we understand where we're sitting, then we'll accept the responsibility. Shall we sun up? Do you see the possibility? Do you see the reality? Okay. Now, how do we make this practical?